Hello folks, welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, March the 30th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from Mainstream Media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how those come in to impact the markets with some of my market analysis. I'm going to do the same thing in these daily market commentaries, but I'm also going to go a little bit further and talk about these option strategies I implement into my portfolio based on the assumptions I come up with in my market analysis. And for you folks, with those option strategies, we've streamlined the process for you guys to find the optimal option strategy for any given assumption. What we do is we build from simple concepts to real life examples. So we'll walk you through all of the things that I'm looking for in an option strategy in order to implement it around that assumption. We aren't just picking option strategies out of the hat. A bullish assumption, we don't just go straight to the long call. What we do is we look at the underlying and that will lead us to what is the best strategy for that underlying given our given assumption. All right, so economic data across the pond, really not a whole lot to see there. Here in the United States, we've got two Fed governors speaking. speaking. Quarles spoke earlier today. Uh, Williams is expected to speak here rather, relatively shortly, maybe in the next half an hour or so. And then on our economic data front, we got consumer confidence, really the only economic data point to look at today. That came in at 109.7. That was expected to be 96.9. So 109.7, highest reading we've seen since basically the pandemic right there in March 2020. Yeah, we were starting to feel that lockdowns and everything else, but we were still seeing the consumer confidence level high coming off of the best economic uh, boom we've had, really, the most healthy anyway. And that being said, we're seeing consumers feel a little bit more confident at those levels. Having said that, that's giving the dollar some strength. That's also giving some hawks some strength here because if the consumer is confident, the expectation is they will start spending. They will free up their pocketbooks and start uh, uh, getting that velocity of money going, really. So consumer confidence is key here. Uh, one of the better data points we've been seeing lately. We have been seeing some of the manufacturing numbers be a little bit uh, iffy. Well, this number is pretty strong. That's why is crude coming off? Mostly due to the strength in the dollar. This dollar is gaining strength off this consumer confidence number. So that's maybe what's giving a little bit of weakness here to uh, crude oil. Bonds. Now bonds, you know, that with that strong consumer confidence, we could expect to see bonds start to sell off, meaning higher interest rates. We're not seeing that as of right now, but we are seeing some of these other dollar denominated uh currencies start to weaken here. Not Bitcoin, it's not really dollar denominated necessarily, but here we can see in the gold futures, they are off by about $28, probably because of the strength in the consumer, uh, consumer's confidence and the strength in the dollar are exacerbating some of this downward move here in gold here. All right, Dow Jones. Yesterday, I was looking at this towards the end of the day. Yes, we did rally and finish very near the highs, but it created a hangman doji here at the top of this move here and that is going to be something we're going to need to keep an eye on at the end of the day if we finish below yesterday's wick that is going to be a signal of a correction here or you know we've been seeing higher highs higher lows but uh, we need to see a break on that uh low here that we saw basically last week we need to see a break below that and a settlement below that really uh, to break this bullish pattern. Now, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't see this market come off and sell back down to the 123 here, find support that would continue that lower low, or sorry, higher, higher high, higher low, uh, which is indicative of a bullish pattern there. You, to break that pattern, we'd have to finish below this line in the sand. We'll call it 3200 is where we would need to sell uh, off to in order to break this pattern. Now that's quite a ways, 900 points. That's a, you know, that's a big move. So we're talking, you know, it wouldn't happen overnight, but we could, that's where the line in the sand is at this point where we would need to see to break a bullish pattern here in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. NASDAQ also created a bit of a topping pattern. It wasn't uh, continuing with this higher high, higher low, but we can see that we are back into this 2017 trend line 
2018 trend line here. So both of those lined up nicely. We are right inside of that. That is a good healthy trajectory to the upside. But with this chart pattern yesterday, Hangman Doji confirmation today, uh, looks like we are looking to want to roll over. Again, in the E-mini S&Ps, very similar situation, a little bit harder to see, but if we zoom in on it, we can see that that was a topping pattern. Uh, and now we've got a bit of a confirmation. Real confirmation would be below yesterday's wick uh, on a settlement. That would make it look really nice. But at this point, it is looking like we are losing a little bit of this momentum to the upside. Uh, you can see yesterday pretty strong into the close overnight, pretty flat. But coming into today, again, really trying to decide where we want to go. Strong consumer confidence. Does that mean higher interest rates? Higher interest rates means that the equities would want to throw a tantrum. So we got to keep our eyes on all these levers and pulleys in the markets right now. Time to probably add a little bit of uh, negative deltas to your portfolio. As far as I'm concerned, this would be the time to start thinking about adding some negative deltas. We've gotten some pattern setups where we're seeing some topping patterns here. We still have really low implied volatility. So if we want to add negative delta, then we need we do need to look at the particular underlying for an this case, Cisco, which you can see, created a really nice topping pattern yesterday. Confirmation today, I'm looking for this market to at least sell off to $50 and possibly even come down and check this little area where I don't have a line, but we can see that it has acted as a support or a resistance in the past. So I'm gonna keep my eye on that. We're gonna call it $49 a barrel, I think we are $49. Uh, for Cisco, I think we're going to go down there and test that area, which puts my strategy in the money if that were to happen. So I went into the longer duration trying to limit that theta decay, right? So about 80 days to expiration. I've got really low implied volatility, as we can see down here on our implied volatility chart. For Cisco, that gives us the uh, belief that the premiums are super cheap because of the way that volatility or implied volatility works in and around these underlyings individually. We can see where we see a low trough come in down here at around 23 and then a high mark, you know, pre-pandemic I'm going to take out um, or during the pandemic I'm going to take out. So we can say 50 is that high range. So we can tell when Implied volatility for Cisco is up around 50. Those are really expensive premiums. And when they are down here near this low, that means the premiums are really cheap. So we're only a couple percentage points away from that super low, extreme low. That leads me to buying premium. I want to buy premium. I want to limit theta decay. I need to get out in time, right? So following along with my rules on this, I went into the June, bought the 50 puts in there for a buck 89. I did this both in my IRA and in my trading account. So I put uh, added both of these negative deltas uh, to my portfolios or this as negative delta to both of my portfolios. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. Um, but trying to stay mechanical here, it looks like a lot of things want to roll over. Um, and we're going to try and at least hedge some of our portfolio if anything starts to move to the downside. All right, that's all I've got for you guys other than take a moment to go over to the disclaimer at the end of this video. Uh, if you like it, hey, give me a thumbs up. You aren't limited to those. That's the best form of flattery, folks. It really does help. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything you want to talk about, see in the future, throw it down there in the bottom there. Love to hear from you folks. And if um, you have any questions or uh, concerns, I will be sure to reach out to you and make sure you are clear of concept. Anything else, I will make sure I'll respond uh, in uh, as soon as humanly possible. How's that? All right. That's all I got for you guys. Again, have a great day. And if you can't take that, take it easy.